Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our BCTC Student Forum today. We have, um, both of us are gonna be talking today about student engagement and leadership and student activities. So we'll go ahead and start off by just introducing ourselves so that you know what to expect with our conversation. Uh, first off, my name is Christina Robinson. I'm the Director of Student Engagement and Leadership, and I'm so excited that you all have joined us today to find out about ways to get involved on campus. I ACTC for about two and a half years now, and I work over at the Cooper campus. And I would also like to, to share off just so we're on a, a good positive note, um, something positive that's been going on during quarantine. I recently had a little guy, uh, a little, little boy, uh, about 10 months ago, actually. So I've been spending lots of good quality time with him, and that's been my part of quarantine. So I want to pass it over now to Regina Shank. She is going to introduce herself and then we'll get started. Hello everyone, it's Regina Shank, Student Activities Coordinator. I have been with the college for 21 years. I'm also alumni of the college and I was a member of a student organization, Phi Theta Kappa, so I was able to get involved as a student as well. I am presently at the Cooper campus Christine and I are both members of the Heart, um, the pantry that's on campus. And um, one of the things that I've enjoyed during quarantine also is being able to spend time with my 13 year old daughter. So that's been very good to be able to be around her a whole lot and watch her grow some more. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. And the one of the questions that I get from students pretty frequently actually is, why should a student get involved on campus? And I know Regina and I are both biased working in student activities that we think it is awesome to get involved. But I do want to give you a couple of reasons why a student might want to get involved. Um, first, think about, I would, I would just ask you, have you ever been involved in any other community organizations or have you been involved in any school organizations in the past? Maybe were you involved in high school in an activity, a club, a sport? Have you ever been involved with choir or band? What are the reasons that you were involved in those? And those would be some of the similar reasons that you should get involved in college. Maybe it was because all of your friends were doing it and you wanted to be able to spend more time with your friends. Uh, maybe because you knew that it would look really great on a resume. A lot of people get involved um, for that reason and, and, and boosting resume and boosting their leadership opportunities as well. Um, that's the reason for a lot of the students to get involved. But also, I would say it's because you really get the chance to build your community when you get involved. You get out of your college experience what you put into it. And if you put in time and attention into getting involved, you get to really build your network. You get to build your friend group. You get to build your social social group all together, but really what you're doing there is you're building your community. So when you have a tough time that pops up and you have that bio test, bio 137, I hear students talk about all the time, being so tough and so difficult, you have that friend group, you have that support system to be able to lean on and say, hey, does anyone have any good ideas of what to do? You have network around you to be able to lean upon. And that's one of the really big reasons that we we encourage students to get involved on campus is to build that community. Um, also, like I said, we're a little bit biased and we think it's a lot of fun as well. <laughs> um, you can hang out with us when, when you get involved on campus, just a little bit, right? Um, <laughs> I do think that we have a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different ways for students to get involved because we recognize that students are going to get involved for a variety of reasons. And whatever your reason is, there is a, a good opportunity for you on campus. I do want to encourage you all to post your comments or post your questions that you have in the comments. We will go through as we see questions pop up. Um, we will answer those. First off, I saw that Angela Meyer, she said hi to both of us. So I want to say hi back. <laughs> we will go ahead and, and I'll let Regina start talking about um, some of the questions that she gets from students. One of the biggest questions that I have on campus is how can I get involved? What kind of student organizations are on campus? So if you're able to share the link. Um, to the BCTC website. We have a really, a lot of um, student organizations that are posted. And what's cool about this is each one of them are posted with their name, as well as a brief description about them. 
and their contact advisors of who to contact with their email, which I would suggest right now versus the phone number. So if you can see, we've got lots of different student organizations. We have African American, um, African student organization. We have student organizations based on your major. We have one on architecture. We have um, a few on nursing, so there's lots of opportunities there. We have um, Coders RS for the MIT program, um, medical information technology. We also have dental hygienists and um, radiography. So if you're involved in if you, any of those are your major, you're going to have opportunities to be in those student organizations, um, help fundraise for some different things, or um, you know, be able to mentor outside of the college network with different organizations and departments. So you'll be able to meet with people that you'll be working with in the future. And then we also have student organizations that are um, just social because they like to help out in the community with community service projects. They have done an awesome job starting the Halloween um, trunk for treat, which a lot of student organizations are, are partnering on now. Um, we have Christian Fellowship. We have Latinx um, International Students Association. We also have LGBTQ um, and allies. Um, we also have a couple that deal with um, business and honor society. Phi Theta Phi Beta Lambda is more into business. Phi Theta Kappa is an honor society, um, which is an honor to be a part of that student organization. Um, we also have um, students for peace and earth justice. They're about to get started again. So I'm very excited about that. We've got two different um, advisors that have stepped up to um, start that student organization again. We also have Treats for Treatment, which is uh, they fundraise and um, donate all the money for cancer research. So if you notice a lot of these um, student organizations, you can be a part of one, you can be a part of multiple. Um, they're just great ways to get involved with the school um, as well as be able to connect with the outside community, with the community service or the mentoring opportunities with your uh, major. Um, so if you notice, if Christina, if you'll, Click on Bluegrass Community and um, Technical College Student Government Association. If you notice, Christina and I are both the student organization advisors for that. Um, we have an amazing group of students that you all have elected in um, in April. So we get to work with a new set of students in the fall. But I have to tell you, one of the things that I'm truly honored about is that it's always a diverse group of students. There's not one um, race, one ethnicity, um, one color. It is always different genders, different. Um, we just always have a range of a diverse group. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have such a successful student government association. So I just want to shout out to them. Thank you all for being involved and thank you all for being a great group of students that administration is going to have a chance to work with. And um, we have student group, student government officers on all seven campuses. So each campus is re represented. So you don't have to worry about Danville. Am I being representative? Yes, you are. You are being represented. Did. Um, so, and one of the questions, what's the benefits of joining the student organization? Um, Christina already highlighted a couple of these, but I'll just go ahead and reiterate. Um, it is awesome for your resume and scholarships. So if you're a part of these student organizations, you're able to put these on your scholarship and resume. And I have to tell you that I think that that's one of the reasons why I was employed at BCTC because I was a part of a student organization. So I not only came to class and did my best, but I went above and beyond by joining one of the student organizations and was able to help out at the school. So people see that and they recognize that and they know that you've put in extra effort if you've got that on your resume or student um, scholarship. Um, another benefit is meeting people. Um, you get to network, not only meet friends, 
one of the comments that SGA has mentioned before is we become like family. Mm -hmm. So if you're in need of a family or a support group, you've got each other, you've got your other students, you've got your advisors to count on. So, um, you know, those mentoring um, to each other, having a study partner or just, you know, a life problem, you can mm -hmm. talk to each other about it. So being able to connect with one another is I think one of the best assets of joining a student organization. Um, there's three, so I have to think of my other one. <laughs> um, job, networking. Oh, and the, um, I'll have to come back. I'm so embarrassed. Sorry. <laughs> how, do you start, <laughs> how do you start a new student organization? You would contact me, regina.shank at kctcs.edu. Um, I've got a couple of students um, that are doing that now for different student organizations. We may have a, um, a veteran group that is coming online. The Peace and Earth Justice is wanting to come back um, to reorganize again. Um, I feel like there's one more, um, I think single moms. So if you are interested in any student type of organization, you'd contact me. You will need to contact me so I can go over the paperwork with you and give you the things that you'll need. Um, you'll need at least five currently enrolled students and two advisors. And these advisors, one can be a full-time employee and the other one can be a part-time or full-time employee. And it doesn't matter if they're faculty or staff. So you need to have two employees of the college. One at least is full-time. So um, I will hand this over to Christina with her next um, info. Perfect. Well, and I want to give a shout out to Adam. He said he's about to graduate from BCTC. Wanted to say congratulations. We are so excited for you. And we are ecstatic to hear that you have had such a great opportunity and great experience here at BCTC. I know that you mentioned the transfer scholarships. Um, we will actually have the transfer center on in the future to talk with, with students about the different opportunities. Um, if you're thinking about going on to a four-year institution after your time here at BCTC. So, I, I'm glad that you already know about those opportunities and you're taking advantage of what we offer here at BCTC. And I also wanted to say hello to Deb Catlett. She said hello to us on the chat and we are so excited to see you, I guess, or see you on Facebook and we hope all is well with your family. Um, so the another question that I get a lot of times, so my, direct, my title is Director's Engagement and Leadership. So there's two different pieces of that, the student engagement and then their leadership. And I get questions about, well, who are the leadership activities for? Do I have to have a title in a student organization? Do I have to be part of a student organization to, to be able to benefit from those leadership opportunities? I want to be very clear with students. I always talk with students about this when I'm in doing presentations and classes is that Every activity that is involving leadership development is for you because we all have the potential to be leaders. Um, here at BCTC, we believe that leadership involves the potential to impact somebody else's life. So maybe you are potentially impacting the lives of your family members, your classmates, your coworkers, but you do have that potential to impact the lives of others. And so we wanna talk about leadership with everyone because everyone is a leader and has the potential to be a leader. So you do not have to hold a title in a student organization. You do not have to be a member of a student organization in order to involve yourself with the leadership activities. Although, like we talked about before, there are a lot of great benefits to being involved in student organizations. So I would highly encourage you to look at the options and see ways for you to get involved. Um, and so a couple of different things that we've had in terms of leadership development opportunities, we have an annual student leadership retreat. Um, this year, we didn't unfortunately get to meet together in person because of COVID-19, but in the past we've had really great, well-attended student leadership retreats. We talk, we dive into different social issues. We talk, we talk about different opportunities for getting involved both at BCTC and then in the community. We talk about your own personal leadership journey. 
What does that look like? How have you developed before you got to BCTC? And then what have your opportunities at BCTC done to develop you into the leader you are today? So a lot of really great opportunities. We also have a lot of fun at those retreats. So if you see any information come out about student leadership retreats, I do promise you it will not be somebody just talking at you all day. They're very interactive. They're very engaging. We are, we are really excited to be able to spend time with you at those. The other opportunities that we have, I know Regina talked about student organizations. You do have the potential to take on leadership uh, opportunities within those student organizations. I know that Phi Theta Kappa in particular, Phi Theta Kappa is a uh, the only internationally recognized honor society for two-year colleges it is a fantastic organization. I know Regina is an alumni. I used to be an advisor for Phi Theta Kappa at a different institution. I love Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, they specifically have a leadership development program that is open to all of their members. So that's a great opportunity for you. Um, but the other piece that I wanted to talk about is the other part of my of my organization or department. I'm sorry, student engagement. So, what does student engagement mean? Student engagement means you just get to have fun. I always tell people I have the world's best job because I get to hang out with students all the time. We get to do really fun activities together. Like in the past, I've taken students hiking at Red River Gorge. We've been canoeing. Um, we've done countdown games out in the Hamburg area. We've done foam wars, uh, which is a Nerf gun style battle arena where I found out I am quite competitive. I did not realize that side of me until going on with the, going into a Nerf gun game. Um, there are a lot of different opportunities for students to be able to just spend time with other students. So you may be wondering, why should I attend an event like that? You'll get to spend time with other students. Maybe you and a friend can sign up together or potentially you get the opportunity to meet other students you wouldn't within your classes. Um, we'll have students from different campuses come. So for instance, we've gone to Keeneland for their Keeneland College Scholarship Day quite a few times together. We have from all seven campuses that come together at that day. We have a um, we have a tailgate out at Keeneland together. We all go in together. We've had quite a few students win scholarships there. So that's a fantastic opportunity. Um, but it's it's all about building your community, building that network that I was talking about. The other piece of the student engagement events that I think is really beneficial for students is that we have a lot of faculty and staff that come and participate in these events as well. So I know that we have had the president of BCTC, Dr. Capo, attend our student leadership retreat in the past. We've had people at the, the vice president level. I know Dr. Russian has attended quite a few of our events in the past. We have multiple faculty members, multiple staff members. I have staff members that come and volunteer with our groups pretty frequently. And it's a wonderful way to get to know and build your professional network of people at BCTC who truly care about you, who want to see you succeed, and maybe potentially have a, a greater network um, that where they can connect you to somebody else that might help you be successful in the future. So there are a lot of good reasons to get involved. First off, have fun just get involved, um, and then also the building your connections both personally and professionally. But within all of the engagement opportunities, I try to develop an, uh, a conversation about leadership in those activities. I'm gonna take canoeing, for example. We went canoeing as a big group. There were about 40 canoeing together. Some of us had been canoeing before, some had not, but we learned a lot about ourselves during that opportunity. Um, I know that it was very important for me in particular to be in constant communication with my partner in the canoe because if we were working against each other, if we were not effectively communicating, you're just going to spin in circles the whole day and that doesn't help anyone. And so there's a life lesson to be learned there. What did it take to, to make sure that you had effective communication? Did you did you come across any bumps in the road or I guess bumps in the river <laughs> as you were going down um, down? Is there anything that you learned about the ways to effectively communicate that to a person? Is it best to yell at a person and say, hey, you're not doing this right? Or maybe is it better to approach the conversation a little bit differently? So there's a lot of life lessons that you can take from opportunities where we're just having fun together. So I always try to instill an element of leadership development within our activities. So 
that. When you go to an interview later on, let's say, we're going to hypothetically talk about your dream job interview you get in a couple of years. And they ask you about professional development. They ask you about leadership opportunities that you've taken on. We're part of student government at Bluegrass Community and Technical College. And we talked about the issues happening on campus and ways to help our students. Some of the ways we did that were by talking about the, the needs for, let's say, transportation for students. Um, our student government actually came together and asked BCTC to purchase the class pass, um, which is a bus, bus pass for students. Our student government did that. Our students did that. And that's something they can talk about later on. And you can talk about opportunities that you've had fun with other um, with other individuals in. I was able to go hiking with the dean of the business department or something like that. That you'll have lots of different, a wide variety of experiences to be able to talk about in that future interview um, and, and just develop yourself in general. That was a very long answer for what leadership opportunities are available for you on campus. Um, but as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this. I'm so excited to be able to get back in person and, and be with you. But I do know that there are plenty of other opportunities to get involved virtually, which we'll we'll talk about at the end here. Um, but I'm going to pass it back over to Regina if you want to talk about some of the uh, activities events. First, I want to give a shout out to Melissa Murphy. She's a graduate alumni of BCTC, and now she has this, uh, her own child coming to school this fall. So yay to I both of you it. all. Thank you all. We appreciate it very much, and we can't wait to have your child as well. All right, so student annual student events for student activities. First, we start off. Actually, we already have in the summer, we did our Salvation Army Lemonade Stand. It's not too late to give to the Salvation Army Lemonade Stand. You can do that virtually. You can just look up Salvation Army Lemonade Stand. And if you have um, any monetary donation, you can give directly to their site. But that goes to help homeless children in the region. So that's one of the things that we've done every year during the summer to kind of kickstart our um, semesters together. So in the fall, we'll start off with ice cream social. Being that this year's derby was postponed to September, I've made the um, this ice cream social derby theme. So being that our mascot is the Mustang that students have elected many years ago, I think the horse and NARA program and the derby, I think that would be an awesome theme for this year's ice cream social. And what the ice cream social does is you're able to meet with the president of the college, as well as vice presidents of the college, as well as many administration, they're there to serve you ice cream. So we'll have that in the fall semester. We'll also have Constitution Day, where we recognize the Constitution of the United States. That is September the 17th, but we have so many campuses, so we can't do everything one day. We have to spread it all throughout the week. So instead of a day, Constitution Day, we'll have Constitution Week. And then we'll go into Halloween, and I'm gonna tell you that is the biggest event on campuses. Everyone loves dressing up as their favorite character. Um, so we have prizes on all campuses for first, second, and third. So we'll have a lot of fun with those themes. We love posting those pictures. And by the way, if you haven't ever been to BCTC's um, Flickr account, I highly encourage you to do that. If you wanna know what the school does, um, what we're involved with and all the many things and events that we do, go to that site. I love looking at the um, public information marketing's website. They post our pictures. They show how much fun and good we're doing in the community. So I highly encourage you to go look at those pictures. And then we also do a um, Tis the Season um, event, though I will say it may be a little different this year um, because of the way our school, school schedule may plan out. So we'll just have to think about that one a little bit more. Um, we also will have come back in the fall, in the spring and we'll have um, Valentine's events. And then Christina will have her March events for spring, um, spring week. 
And then we'll also have the end, the finale in April. We'll have our spring events, which is always served up with pizza. And we'll have our SGA voting elections again. So that's our normal calendar. And um, one of the things that I wanted to tell each and every one of you all is statistically, if you are involved in campus, the more you're involved in campus, the better you do in your classrooms. I don't know how that really happens because you think if you're spending time doing something else, how are you staying focused on your studies? But I think it's more of a mentality. So if you're overall well-being, then you're able to focus more on your studies and do a better job. So I just want to, you know, encourage you when you see these free events on campus and by the way they're not just from student engagement and leadership they're not just from student activities you have mm -hmm. events going on from multi um, diversity equity and inclusion um, first year center counseling there are so many different free events that are on campus that i highly encourage you to take part of some of those and by the way one of the questions is how much do student activities events cost Nothing. We're free. Nothing. Uh, we know you're in college. We know you don't have a lot of money. You, we want this to be fun and less stressful. So no money is involved in any student activities events. And where do I have these events? All seven campuses. So it doesn't matter if you're in Leestown, Lawrenceburg, Danville, Cooper, Newtown, Winchester. Oh, Lawrenceburg. Did I say them? We have all seven campuses you are going to be, we will be at giving you these free items. So you don't have to travel very far depending on which campus that you are at. So I encourage you to come and see us. Absolutely. Uh, and I wanted to tell, uh, mention something that you you just said. You, you said it perfectly. It's not just us that are doing activities on campus. BCTC is full of different opportunities for students to get involved, whether that be the counseling department, which I know that they've been doing a lot of workshops throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. um, support services provides a ton of different events for their students. And so I want to encourage you all to go ahead and get, um, I, I just saw that Anita, Anita Nellums, hi, by the way, um, commented that we have our, our campus connections, um, which is uh, the workshops for our personal counseling department. Those are fantastic resources for our students. Um, but I do want to encourage you to get in, involved this summer even. There are a lot of opportunities for ways to get involved in a COVID safe way. You do not have to be on campus to get involved at this point in time. When I the things that student engagement is doing right now, we are offering a walking challenge because some students are zoomed out, I realize, and so that'll encourage you to get out, get outside um, and stay social distant from others, but also to get your steps in. So you, we're, we have walking challenges. We are live streaming uh, different workout classes throughout the week. We are playing Jackbox games together, which is an online gaming platform. It's a lot of fun. We've had a lot of great feedback from students about that. Um, it's just an opportunity to de-stress and, and just kick back and relax and, and have fun with some others from BCTC. We are also doing Netflix viewing watch parties, which later on this week, we're going to be watching Back to the Future together. So I would encourage you all to tune in for that if you have the chance. We're also doing a baking challenge. I've heard from a lot of students that one of the things that they have enjoyed about quarantine is, is trying out things in the kitchen. And so we are doing what is called the Great BCTC Bake Off. If you can tell, I might be a fan of the Great British Bake Off. <laughs> so we're doing the Great BCTC Bake Off and all students, faculty and staff are encouraged to get uh, participate in that. It is for amateur bakers only. So any skill level is is welcome to come in. Even if baking break and bake cookies is is your skill level, you are still welcome. Um, but there are a lot of great opportunities for you to get involved this summer. You can find that information on the Student Engagement and Leadership webpage. If you go to the BCTC website, sometimes the easiest way to find it is to just search for either Student Engagement and Leadership or Seal, like the animal S E A L. Um, that pull up the Student Engagement and Leadership website, which has a link then over to the Student Activities page that Regina 
was going over earlier with all of the information about our student organizations. Um, and then also you can you can reach out to us. Um, I know that we are nearing the end of our time here. So we want to make sure that you know how to reach out to both Regina and I, if you have any questions, ways to get involved on campus, what student organization might be good for me. I want to encourage you all to reach out to us by email. That's the best way to get a hold of us right now. And so my email address is christina.robinson at kcpcs.edu. And I look forward to hearing from you all. Regina, I'll let you share yours. Hello, everyone. If you have any questions, um, you can send it to Christina or myself. My email is regina.shank at kctcs.edu. And we'll be happy to you know, try to help you answer your questions or at least point you in the right direction of who can help you. Absolutely. And I do want to mention, since Christina talked about um, Anita and the counseling, those are also free services that mm -hmm. are on campus. So please take advantage of all your free services that you have in the college. We just have so many and they're a great way to be able to use um, your resources wisely. Absolutely. That's a fantastic point. All right. Well, it's it's crazy that the half hour has already gone by so fast. I've had a lot of fun talking with you, Regina, and, and talking with you students. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the comments that you all have posted, and thank you for engaging with us. I hope to see you at future student engagement and student life activities, and hope to see you back on campus soon. Bye. <laughs>